Karen Lawler Patterson, the goodness chick. I'm a podcaster, motivational speaker, author, counselor, and proud part of the Mental Health News Radio Network. Join me on the journey of navigating the joys and pitfalls of life, addressing mental health, addiction, raising kids, and giving back. If it takes a village, then join me as one of those villagers. Villagers wanted. Spent the past week and a half in Malaysia. Um, we are on Tuesday heading to Singapore. Malaysia is a spectacular country. Um, some of the most dynamic food that I've eaten in terms of spices and color and the people are wonderful and friendly. Countryside is kind of mind blowing with um, you know, the palm oil trees and banana plantations and, and the coastline, bum, bum, bum. Without a doubt, hands down, my favorite part of our trip in Malaysia has been uh, the time I was able to spend with the Lim family. So Jit Peng Lim is the founder of The Rock House, which stands for Redeeming Our Community Kids. Uh, it's located in Kulong, Malaysia. Rock House is absolutely committed to providing educational support as well as meeting basic needs of young people when it comes to feeding them, clothing. They're kind of like, um, I don't want to say rubbing a genie lamp, making things happen, but when I tell you just being able to kind of observe uh, for 24 hours, JIT, um, I mean, you know, loading kids on a bus to come on, on a, a weekend, and they're, um, you know, doing a weekend um, school session with kids, you know, keeping them occupied, out of trouble, to, you know, this kid needs this type of clothing, to, you know, this kid's done, done great on their exams, and there's no way they'd be able to go to university, but doing what they need to do, um, and getting people to, to help and support, I mean, you know, we have people hurting all over the world and in pockets of the world where you have people that are truly ambassadors of goodness and fighting um, for what's right, pursuing help and, and, and trying their very best to um, help those in need. And this is what this family is doing. Uh, I'm in awe of them. I am I'm grateful for them. They are serving, serving, serving in, in dynamic ways. Um, but they're in needs of hands and hearts as well as financial help. This is a nonprofit. It's as nonprofit as you get, baby. These people are living on faith. Um, they don't have a PayPal, just in terms of the things with Malaysia. So donations um, are via bank transfer. So I'm going to provide that uh, information in the notes. I hope you check it out. Man, this, you know, if, if you've been heavy on your heart for a place to volunteer your time, get invested. These guys are doing amazing things changing the community, changing lives, the domino effect is apparent. Um, and I hope that, you know, if your heart's kind of pulling that you want to, you know, do a monetary donation, please check out the donation information in the notes. Um, I, I, am, I so wish I had more time with this family um, that just are serving and loving and caring and sacrificing, man. These people are making some crazy trained sacrifices. Um, and just doing, doing hands-on mission work that's just, um, I'm in awe of. So I hope you, you, you tune in, you enjoy, and um, you get stoked, my friend, because it's all about community. All right. I am here um, in Kluang, Johor, uh, with an epic, epic human being. We actually uh, were connected just a few days ago. I have Jit Peng Lim with me. Hi, everybody. Yeah. Um, here in southern Malaysia. Right. Uh, and you are the founder of Rock House. That's right. Uh, if you want to just explain a little bit what that is to our, to our listeners, that'd be awesome. Uh, Rock House uh, stands for Redeeming Our Community Kids. That's a house where we, we provide services for the children. The people that we serve are usually uh, single mothers from single parents. We have between... 60 to 80 plus kids every day that comes into our center. In the morning, it's a almost free kindergarten uh, for the poor. And the afternoon is an after school program. So we help them to do their, their homeworks. We help them with literacy. We help uh, kids that uh, cannot go to school uh, due to their stateless um, problem. So until they can go to school, they will, they will come to Rock House to, to keep abreast with their education uh, through Rock House. Uh, Rock House also, we serve the poor where we feed the kids. Uh, most of the kids that we have uh, are close to a high 80 percentile eats only once a day, uh, proper meal. 
Uh, when I say proper meal, it's not like your your average meal. Proper meal means having some rice and some veg, and if they are lucky, has some protein. But mainly, they survive on just bread and biscuits. Mm. And uh, besides that, we also help with um, pro, uh, whatever they need in terms of clothing. So these kids, um, they come, they, they have no clothes to wear or have no uniforms or proper shoes to go to school or they need some school bags, whatever they need uh, for the children, for their education, we will provide for them. Uh, that is what Rock House is all about in a nutshell. Okay. And, it, and it's a program that is... Um literally changing lives here. I know uh, poverty and kind of the, the, the rate of the dropout rate is pretty high. Correct. Um, and what you're trying to do is very much an uphill battle. It at, is you know. an uphill battle. Um, one of the biggest problems we have is illiteracy. Not in the sense that they, they can't get education. It's just that they have, they have a late start in early childhood education. So in Asia region, pretty much every parent are, are in this zone where they want their kids to learn to read and write by a certain age. And these kids, you know, don't go to school until they are seven. Mm -hmm. And by the time they go to grade, the first grade, all the other classmates are already ahead of them. They know their ABCs, they know how to write and count. And these kids go in and they just barely know their ABC. So mm -hmm. At, from the get-go, they are already a couple steps behind. So as the, as the years goes by, they just get left behind further and further. So by the time they finish 6th grade and as they go to 7th, a lot of them just quit by the time they reach 7th, if mm. not at 6 And if those who can last a bit longer, at most at 8th grade. And so they are, they are, we have a very high dropout rate. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully things will begin to change in well, from, from this year and onwards, as we have fewer and fewer drop-off rate because of the kindergarten opportunity that we give children uh, to go to, to have an early start in childhood education. So those kids who have followed us, they are doing very well. They are in, uh, the oldest is at fifth grade. They are doing very, very well. They are in the top 15, 20 percentile of their, their class, so which is a very good thing. And it's a proof to, to people and to the rest out there that these kids are not dumb, but mm -hmm. given the same opportunity, given the same play, uh, playing, playing field, they can excel uh, just as normal kids can do. Yeah. Well, you're, you're giving them the gift. They come from a single family. They come from a place where, you know, they are poor and, and they have no dreams. All they want to do is to work in a plantation or to be a, a, a factory worker mm -hmm. or, you know, to whatever you know yeah. it's just that scraping the barrel i mean they have no dreams you know when i first met them they have no dreams they, they nobody wants to be a teacher nobody wants mm -hmm. to be a businessman nobody wants to be a lawyer nobody wants to be they just want to be because there's no role models the role models they have are just people around them yeah. and so to rock half I, I bring lots of friends from america from from different parts of the world you know they come and they see them they talk about their country and they see how oh, this is what you can do this mm -hmm. is what i'm doing you know, to bring to to breathe dreams in them. I hope to be a, you know, hopefully that we will release dreams into their life. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's my desire. I mean, I, I don't, it'd be great if they can come back and serve. Yeah. But more importantly, is that they they be the person that God has called them to be. Right. And every human being, I think, is has the right to be able to dream. And instead of like you said, scraping the barrel, it's you can be. You know, and you, and I think really your key ingredient, because I, I, you know, had the privilege of kind of observing a bit of, of you know, what your work is, is relationships. Yes, and I think right. when it comes to kids, man, who have baggage, like so many kids do, right. it takes time to gain, right, right their trust. The onions. The, they're onions, baby. And I say they're, they're like, they're like Shrek and, yeah, yes. you know, uh, or they're like, the, you know, the ogres in Shrek that we all have layers. Yeah, correct. But you, you, you gain that trust with them and, and empowering them. You can do things. And what a beautiful thing that is because we have so many young people who are, I think, feel defeated or broken. Right. I think I have uh, the situations, things are very volatile sometimes, you know. Mom has to be, you know, have a breakdown and the kids doesn't come or when the 
absent father returns back, you know, he throws them off the temple and everything. And, and, or, or they have a new boyfriend. And, and it, you know, you got all these other X factors that really just mess things up for mm-hmm. us, you know, because the kids that come, they are on a schedule. Every yeah. day they, they are on a schedule. So we are from Monday to Saturday. Everything's on a schedule. So they know what to do. So yeah. when somebody comes in and rattles that, rattles that, you know, you know, it's so easy to revert back to just being lazy, just sitting down, doing nothing. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to just, oh, I know I'm too tired. Oh, I don't need to go to school. Huh? I don't yeah. need to go to school. And I, and I won't go to school. Uh, so we are always fighting these X factors yeah. that we cannot prevent in their homes. Right. So we, we try to be as stable as we can in, in season, out of season, in our house. No matter what, we, we try to consistent. Be, be consistent. Even in holidays, we have classes in holidays. Because if you don't have classes for a day, they'll be running the streets. Yeah. They'll forget everything. And then when they come back, I'm, I'm just, with, you know, whether it's at home, what the kids are exposed to or that they fall into. Um, I mean, that you, you guys kind of go against some heavy stuff. I know one of the trends you said now is, you know, glue yeah, because glue. it's an expen- you know, an expensive, you know, gas, crystal meth you know, yeah. gas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's something we can do. We, I say our resources, our hands are tight. Yeah. I, I, I'm doing so many things at one time, feeding, preparing school, I, I go out to the community, finding homes for people, finding work for people. I can't do everything. Mm-hmm. You know, to, to sit down and counsel them, it takes a lot of time. Yeah. And not all that. So, I have to, my attention is, is, is quite thinly spread. And my teachers are also quite, so quite spread because there's so many of them. You know, there's only... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven teachers, and that's like seventy old kids. Oh. Uh, so you know, see six teachers, you know? and so we, we have we are we are thinly spread. You know? yeah. So, so you know, we hope that in days to come, you know, you know, we can have more volunteers. We can have more resources to get better, mm-hmm. uh, better help. You know, to partner with people, you know, just of counseling or whatever they mm-hmm. need. So counseling is not a problem. It's constantly in the language yeah. that they're comfortable with. Yeah. So I'm fighting with a lot of cultural things that don't they think they think that doing casting means I'm something wrong myself. Right. And also battling with the language, you know, most of the kids don't speak English. Yeah. They can't speak Bahasa and they just speak Tamil, which is Indian. Uh, so it's a lot of factors. There's to a take, lot of factors, right. you know. I mean I can I can counsel but I my English is good, my Bahasa is not too mm-hmm. all right. Tamil, I'm, I can school you in Tamil. That's yeah. all. So, <laughs> but there's only also, like you had said, so much you can do. Yeah, so I mean, you're do. wearing 72 hats. Yeah, correct. So, and there's those kids that come to the wrong house and there are kids that don't, don't come to the wrong house as well. Yeah. And so, so there's a lot of things that I have to consider yeah. and to focus where, where I feel that is most needed. Right. right now. So, uh, we try to get help for them. We try. Mm-hmm. You know, with the best ability, uh, but it's, again, it's up to the parent, or yeah. the mother, or the father, or, or parents, whether they want to further you know, yeah. get help. But if they don't, that's my hands are tied. Your so, hands are very tied. Yeah. So it's like if the parents don't want them to come to the house, there's nothing I can do. Right. Because at the end day, it's your child, it's mm-hmm. your right. Right. Who am I? Yeah. I can do whatever good, but if you if you don't put your child at the gate, I can't pick them up. Right. Yeah. That seems pretty fair yeah. on your end. I, I know um, kind of just driving around and us chatting this afternoon, um, you know, you're kind of, you know, we referenced it being an uphill battle, but I believe with every battle, there are absolutely many small victories oh, yes. and many lives being changed. Yes. But I also look at, you know, kind of asking you about, um, I mean, you're literally, you're feeding kids, you're, you're encouraging, you're educating, you know, the, the program is doing so many fantastic things. But sometimes it's like, okay, where, and, and I just, I think it's fantastic just how God provides mm-hmm. and, and, and the blessings mm-hmm. from just when you don't even, you know, ex- anticipate it. It's right. crazy. But, but I think about people who are listening who will say, man, you know, my heart is kind of being led to, to help out these kids or this program. What I, I want to kind of throw out there, I know we had talked about um, in, in today's show notes, I'm going to have a link in the bottom that can provide information if you want to do a monetary donation. For those of you guys, um, 
who might be thinking, yes, dude, come over. When I tell you I this is need, spectacular. I need, I need people. <laughs> I need men. Yeah, men? Well, what do you I need? need? What do you I need, need men. I need family. Uh, one of the things that I, 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 I connect with churches, uh, whether it's in Singapore, local church, is to bring family cell group, to come here and to serve as a family. You know, all you need, if you, if you can, if your kids know ABC, if they can help you do games, serve food, and you know, do station games and your kids can be part of it as a family, as a unit, serve together. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's powerful in the sense that the kids that you are serving do not see this. Mm -hmm. They don't see a father, a mother. Yeah. It's unusual. So when they see a father, a mother, I want to make it is my, my ambition to, to tell them that the normal family has a father, a mother, mm -hmm. and, and we work together. We don't fight together. We can play right. together. We don't just try to feed you and help. Hopefully, you survive. But we yeah. want to to make sure that we love you. We just had a interestingly. We just had we did our first parenting course for single parents. Oh wow! Awesome. Okay? And it was the first time we 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 didn't know how to go about it. We had some friends come in and we did some translation from English to to Bahasa. It wasn't in their language, but that was the best we can get. We, we couldn't get a, 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 a Tamil interpreter. And they had 11 single mothers and one very brave single father. <laughs> one very brave. It was, it was very nice. It was small. It was, it was fun because they shared a lot. They, they shared the hardship. They shared, you know, one of the things I learned from it was that they never knew there were parenting costs. Mm -hmm. and, and it broke my heart because they thought that having a family is like a rolling a dice of free. I feed them, I, I put them to school and hopefully they turn out well. Yeah. And we, so we, we, had, we, we, we had two modules. Uh, we wanted to be a, a very, we don't to take too much of the time, you know, of the attention span. So within an hour and a half, it was done. And the one of the modules was spend 10 minutes with a child every day mm -hmm. and tell them that you love them. Mm -hmm. Tell them that, you know, just speak love into their life. I can tell you that the, the, the four, four mothers that practice that, the children's, is a different today. Mm. In just a matter of weeks, you can see the confidence, you can see that love time is filled. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like, we hit a honey hole and he said, okay, we need to do another class. Mm -hmm. We need to do another class of, you know, just teaching parents how, equipping them because, you know, they didn't know any better. They came mm -hmm. from a broken family themselves. They came and their family came from another broken family. You know, and, and so we, I'm so encouraged, I'm so encouraged because, hey, kids are, Kids are getting their, their love time filled, not by me, but mm -hmm. by their own flesh and blood, mothers and fathers. Mm -hmm. And so we, we want to continue to, to make sure that when people can't serve, we want them to serve as a family, whether your child is a baby or two, three, or everybody can, can serve. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty. Everybody can serve. And so, but we, we relish men. In, in, as I tell Irene, they, they call me father for, yeah. for a reason. Everybody calls me father. And it was, it's so funny because my, my children didn't understand that when they were young. I said, Dad, how, how could you have so many children? <laughs> <laughs> Indian children too. <laughs> uh, so but, so they, they call me father. And because it's a term that I don't take lightly, mm -hmm. it's a term that I take with great responsibility. Because what does a father do? Mm -hmm. I, I keep them disciplined. I, I have to love them. I got to provide for them yeah. whatever their needs may be the best of my ability. That's what a father do. And I have so many kids and there's only one father. Some of the kids in the early days, they say, oh, I'm not going to film it. So I'm not going to go to school. Yeah. Uh, why, why bother? Because I'm going to feel anyway. So I say, no, you got to do. Mm -hmm. So we, we reward them for showing up. Yeah, yeah. well, you do what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so kids love like me taking them out to KFC, to mm -hmm. McDonald's, or just sitting down. You know, like Logis and um, Sion Raj and Navin, I brought them to Barney's because they always go out to eat. So I said, I'm going to teach you how to use fork and spoon. Yeah. Don't use your hand. So, you know, just teaching them how to use yeah. a knife, how to cut the chicken. <laughs> so, it's, it's a lot of first, yeah, a lot of first time experience. And it, I think it warms me up because I, I feel like, hey, I'm teaching them a new skill. Mm -hmm. So that's what we want to do. We want men to come. Mm -hmm. If better, bring your wife, bring your children. You know, if you have the resources, come.
Yeah. But we do need men. We need men to affirm each of, each and every child. Right. Uh, that's only one of me. Yeah, that's so one we, of you. Is, we, we are trying very hard to the last five years to uh, to get a man to work mm-hmm. with us. It's just been very, very hard. It's long hours. The pay is <laughs> low. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not low. It, it, it's, you know, you can find a better pay for, for lesser headache work. Mm-hmm. Headache, you know, you know, coming to a small town, uh, working with people that you know, they think, oh, what do I get out of this? I say nothing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely nothing. But you're serving, and I know some people who are, are listening right now might be kind of in a transitional stage in their life or kind of looking for something in ways to serve. Uh, th- I mean, there's no greater joy, I, I believe, in the, the, the privilege and gift of being able to serve. And one of the things you shared, which I just think is so true, you know, so often it's like, okay, you know, you're, 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 you're helping these people, you're encouraging, which takes a lot out of you, but it also, it, it brings so much joy and, and fulfill. Eventually. Eventually, <laughs> eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what you're wearing seventy five thousand yeah, hats eventually, eventually. Yeah, yeah, eventually but but for those who are maybe you know looking and, and feeling a tug or been praying about it I, I say look at the notes that I have in today's episode I'm gonna leave the link um, you know to the rock house along with if you're feeling the pull in terms of you know financial donation I believe you know in in the past oh my gosh I'm gonna say eight and a half months that have been on the road I have met so many dynamic people and, I, and I've heard people say over, over the years, you know, what can I do that can really make a difference? What can I do? And I think that's a really lame excuse because every single one of us have the gift of life right now. If you're listening, you're breathing, you're alive, you have a conscious choice to say, am I going to sit back just like the kids that, you, that have to make a choice every day? Right. Do I go to school or not? Am I going to change the world? Am I going to make a difference? And whether it's handing somebody a bag lunch, it's praying for them, it's going outside of yourself and, right. and spreading kindness, or it's hopping on a plane and coming to Malaysia. And if you want to talk about something that will rock your world, getting out of your comfort zone, taking your family, we're going to come for 10 days, we're going to come for six months. It's something I say, push yourself. We're doing thumbs up or yeah. Rama. Um, I, I encourage you to really kind of think about it because we have people in this world, whether it's in our country, our state, across the globe who are hurting. And when I tell you love and kindness is infectious. Amen. And it makes a difference. It changes the world. And too often, we can be just total, um, we're, we can be tools and just make excuses to say, I can't, I can't, I can't. Well, you can you can, you can, you can. It's a conscious choice. And this guy who's sitting next to me right here, when I tell you I am in awe how God is using him, when and him, his wife, and his kids to just serve people that are your people. Like this is your hometown. And, and and I think about that with the kids I've worked with where I when I tell you I walked off my high school campus, graduation uh, campus and I was like, I am never coming back here again. <laughs> and I'm like, God's got a sense of humor because I, I worked, I came right back to the same school district Good. and some of the, the, the hardest times, but the most beautiful was the fact that I was, right. you're connected to a community right. and it's not just about Hey, I care about you, but yeah. relationships, relationships, relationships. And if you want your socks blown off, like invest in a way of your heart. Yeah, it's not a touch and go relationship. It, it isn't, it's, dude. So because a lot of times people go overseas missions, then they go there and they, and they, they sold out and they do great things and everything. And six months later, it was just an experience. Yeah. Okay, for me, it's a lifestyle. I, I can't run away. I mean, people stop my car asking me if I have, I have food in my car. So, so I'm a walking 7-Eleven, you know, is that rice, you know? Father, can you feed me? Do you have anything in the car? I like, you know, people stop us, you know, and yeah. we have to change cars because you know, our cars are, you know, vandalized for if you don't have anything and then we have to do. And so we have to keep, you know, borrowing cars and just to you know, stay low. Uh, but we stay in a community, we can't run. We have to be real. Be yeah. real with ourselves, be real with our faith, be real about what we do, be very intentional because we can go do missions in some third world country and then we go away and we go back to our lives and as though like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. But over here, it's every day. Yeah. I'm, I live among them, they see me, they watch me, mm-hmm. they hear me. And so we have to be authentic. Yeah. Authentic in our relationship, authentic in what we do, authentic in in the way we give. 
Yeah. Because people will see if they they can they will they can tell a knock off a mile away. They can smell a knock off a mile away. Because I'm here for the long run. No, I'm not here for. Oh, I'm here for a three months stay and I'm gone. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here to stay. I'm not. I'm not. I can't run away. If I run away, if I walk away, I'm just like any other man in your life that that walk out. So I. I come into this position where I cannot quit mm-hmm. unless somebody graciously take over me and God <laughs> provide somebody and I move to back to Hawaii. You know, be nice. <laughs> but that won't happen. Uh, but you know, we we can't, I can't walk away. Yeah. As a father, I cannot walk away. Um, I'm a father to many, and so I do not want to be another statistic in their life that that quit on them. Yeah. And I think the damage will be even greater. So even father quit on me. Yeah. After all these years, father quit as well. So I'm here for the long haul. For how long my season may be, I do not know. But I'm here long haul. I want to see, hopefully, in a few years' time, the first time they graduate from college. You know, I want to see them going to colleges. I want to, I want to make sure that you know, you know, it's like a life goal to see one graduate from college. Right. And that's my life goal. I don't ask so much. You know, people, that's my like my bucket list. I just want to see, you know, just the first one to go finish college. I'll yeah. be like the proudest moment. I just, that's my bucket list. You know, it's, you know, I, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want fancy cars. I want to see them succeed. I want to see them, you know, come back to me and say, look, you know, I'm taking care of my father, I'm taking care of my mother, you know. I, yeah. I, I want to see that. That's my bucket list. And I, you know, I, I I think there's no greater joy to, is to see others succeed. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I, I just want to see them succeed in life. And I know then that generation from there onwards will change forever. Mm-hmm. It's, a it's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. It's a ripple effect. So that's my desire. My desire is just, oh Lord, oh, in this lifetime, let me see one graduate. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'm, you and your family, man, and, and the kids you serve are, are um, in my family's prayers. Uh, I feel honored that our paths crossed. I, I truly am. Come over. Come on it's over. It's cheap here. It is cheap. Yes, it is cheap. It's cheap here. <laughs> you got good steaks here. You got good steaks. You got good food and it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. Good coffee. Good coffee. Yeah, you got good coffee. Yeah, yeah good coffee. Cheers. Um, American size water H2O. <laughs> Hydration is important, my friends. Hydration is important. Jen, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Um, from the bottom me. of my heart. You Thank guys, you check out episode notes. Please, please, please. Uh, information about the Rock House, information in way of financial donations or ways that you can hop on a plane um, and serve. Hop, serve, serve. hop on a plane, not a boat okay. or you know, not a ferry. We are going to take a plane, so it will be a very long hop canoe a plane. haul. Yes. yes. Hop a plane. <laughs> Don't send money. Send yourself. Come on over. <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Jet, thank for you. being here. And peace, love, peace out. and goodness, my friends. If you enjoyed today's show, I encourage you to visit goodnesschick.com and sign up for my newsletter, providing insights and encouragement just for you. Thanks for listening, my friends.